Well, God bless you today. Amen. Uh, Wednesday night, Wednesday Bible study. And we are glad to be with you one more time to share the word of God. Um, as always, just praying that you're doing well and that you're continuing to believe God. Amen. Um, to hold on to him and, and to listen to his voice. Yeah. God is a communicating God. He speaks. That's one of the things when we were talking on Sunday about Micah's idols. Yes. They can't speak, right? These false gods, these idols, these carved images, they can't speak. They can't communicate. They can't move. But we serve the true and living God. Amen. Amen. Who speaks and who moves and who's strong and mighty. And so praying that you are continuing to walk with him and inclining your ear into his voice because God is speaking. Amen. Mm -hmm. And um, we praise God uh, for tonight, for the, for the Bible study. Um, you know, we're going to continue where we were subject wise last week. We were talking about being doers of the word, right? Living by faith and being a doer of the word is almost the same thing, mm -hmm. right? Because uh, faith comes by the word, and when you do the word, you actually are living by faith that the word produces in you. Amen. And so um, we want to talk about being doers of the word as we continue to, to, to just embrace this idea that faith is not something for us to know in our heads and to um, pick up from time to time. Right. And, and use from time to time. No, it's the way we go about our daily living. Yeah. And as we do that, we'll see that we'll have more success. We'll walk in more power. Um, and we will do more things for the kingdom. Um, and we be better people as well. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Making a difference in the earth. And so uh, being a doer of the word, living by faith, is important. Praise the Lord. So yeah. we're going to talk tonight um, again about... Uh, being a doer of the word, we we touched on this last week. We were in James last week, right? Um, yes. James chapter 1, where we were talking about being a doer of the word, uh, beginning um, at verse 19, we started talking about that. Um, but we're going to, this week, go to James chapter 2, and we're going to begin reading at verse 14. But let's pray first, and then we'll get into the word together. So we'll be in James 2 beginning at verse 14, and we'll go down to verse number 26. So that's what we're looking to cover tonight. But let's pray. Father, we bless your name. Yes, we thank you, God, yes, for God. another day. Thank you, Lord, for um, showing us your goodness in the yes, land Father. of the living. We pray now that you will speak from your word, that, Father God, the word will come alive in us. And, Father God, as we hear your word, as we receive your word, that you will bless us with understanding. Father, yes, we Father, ask now for revelation, uh, for uh, your wisdom, God, that yes. we can apply to our lives in exactly the way we need it. And Father, we thank you, Lord, that your word can transform our lives. Yes, and so, Father, Father God, we receive you. it now by faith, and we thank you for what you're going to do in us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. We have some... <laughs> Some music with us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> the, the, what do you call that again? A wind chime? Wind chime. Wind chime mm -hmm. is just going off, showing off. Amen. It's windy outside and wind chime is, is providing us some accompaniment. <laughs> Amen. Um, but uh, we're talking tonight about being doers of the word. So let's look at James chapter 2 and let's begin at verse 14. Because this is where James is talking about faith without works is dead. So we want to look at that tonight, that faith without works is dead. Well, what does that mean? So let's look at it beginning in verse 14. James says, what does it profit, profit my brethren, though a man say he has faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Mm -hmm. I just want to stop right there, right? Because many people criticize James as being, when I say James, the, the, the writing of James, as being contradictory to what Paul says. Mm. Because Paul says, we're saved by faith. Yes. 
That's it, right? Faith in Jesus Christ. That, that, right? that that's what saves you. And James is saying, he says, what's it going to profit you if you say you have faith and not works? Can, mm-hmm. safe, can faith save you? Mm-hmm. And he seems to be saying it can. And he is, but he's not saying it in a way that's contradictory to right. Paul. Mm-hmm. Because Paul is saying, you don't need works, you just need faith. Mm-hmm. And James is saying, if you really have the faith that saves you, yeah. then that faith will be revealed through works. Yes. Mm-hmm. See, so he's not he's not trying to say you need works to be saved, but what he's saying is if you don't have works, mm-hmm. then you really don't have faith <laughs> because not the faith that saves, because right. the faith that saves produces good works in your life. And so that's when he says, if you have faith but not works, can what he's really saying is, can that faith save you? Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. If you have faith, but you don't have any works, he's asking, can that faith save you? No. Because what he's saying is, that's not a true, genuine faith. Yes. Mm-hmm. Right? It's not a true, genuine faith. So I think it's very important to lay that foundation because some can look at this and go, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Paul said it's just about faith. Now James is talking about works. They're not contradicting each right. other. Mm-hmm. So he, he's saying, what is a prophet? And he gives an example. If a brother or a sister be naked and destitute of daily food. So they need clothes. They're hungry. They need mm-hmm. food. Mm-hmm. And one of you say unto them, depart in peace. Be warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, you give them nothing. Mm. You give them not those things which are needful to the body. He says, what does it profit? Yeah. So what he's saying here is, see, if you really are walking in a saving faith, you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you're now a child of God, you can't look at a person who's hungry and homeless and just say, God bless you, be warm and be filled. Yes. And then go yes. about your business. Mm-hmm. He said, that's not, see, something's wrong there. Yes. Because, see, the faith that saves you comes from God. Yes. Salvation is of the Lord. And God has a heart for the needy. He has a heart for the orphan. He has a heart for those who are oppressed, the widow, Right? Those who are mm-hmm. down and out. Yes. And so the God we serve doesn't look at those and go, be blessed and be filled <laughs> and keep on walking. He looks for us to be the extension of his love in the earth yes. and reach out to those people in tangible ways to the extent that we can. Yes. You can't give what you don't have. Right. The question is, can are you going to give what you do have? Right? Yes. You can't give a thousand if you only have a hundred. Right. But the question is, if you have a hundred, are you going to give any of that hundred? Or are you going to say, be warm and be filled? And and what James is saying is that to say be warm and be filled is not evidencing the faith that you profess you have being a child of God through yes. Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Because our God's a compassionate God. Right. And compassion is caring in action. <laughs> Right? It's action. You actually do something to demonstrate you care, right? right? And so faith is demonstrated through action. So he says, if we see someone who's in need and we just like pronounce a blessing on them but keep on going, I'm praying for you. Hmm. What does that do for that hungry soul? No. That person needs a meal. Yeah. What does it do for that that cold person who doesn't have a coat in the winter time? Yes. That person needs a yes. coat, needs Amen. some gloves, Amen. needs a pair of boots. Mm-hmm. Doesn't need some nice words from us. Right. So he says, what does it profit if we were to do that? And then in verse 17, he says, even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead. Now, 
so we're saved by faith. And if we, you know, if we go to the books, uh, book of Ephesians, let's go there for a quick second. The book of Ephesians chapter 2, because that's where, it you know, among many places, Paul writes how we are saved by, by faith. In verse 8, Ephesians 2 and 8, he says, For by grace are ye saved through faith. And that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. And then he says, not of works. Right. We're not saved by works. Right. So so that's clear. James is not saying we're saved by works. But mm -hmm. what he's saying is, if you're really saved, you'll have some works. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> to go along with it. Right. So, by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Not of works, lest any man should boast. But look at verse 10. For we are his, God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto what? Good works. Good works, mm -hmm. which God has before ordained that we should walk in them. So you see how faith and good works are linked? You see how faith and being saved and producing good works are linked? Yeah. When we have faith, we're saved. But when we're saved, we then demonstrate that we're God's workmanship, created in Christ to do good works. Yes. <laughs> so you can see they go together. Mm -hmm. That's why James is not being contradictory. And in fact, if you see Paul's writing, he, he even talks about how faith that saves you is also accompanied by good works. Yes. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that's why if we really are saved, and this is not to go around testing people, right? <laughs> so I don't want I don't want anybody going around like you know trying to test their neighbor. But if we're walking in a saving faith, then we're doing good works. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. God saved us to do good works yes. through Christ Jesus. So um in verse 17 it says, Even so, faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. You know, we we it's it's, it's no demonstration of, mm -hmm. of what we're supposed to be walking in. So look at verse 18. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying here is, it's a challenge. Yeah. Okay, someone might say to you, or say to us, right, okay, you have faith, but I have works. Mm -hmm. And so James is saying, okay, you have works? He said, show me your faith without works. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, show me that. Show me your faith without good works. And he said, and then he says, but I'll show you my faith by my good works. In other words, yeah. see, the good works is a demonstration of what I have going on in mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. Right? It, it, it reveals what's going on in your heart. It's an amazing thing how actions reveal, right? Yes. People can yes. say a lot of things, mm -hmm. but it's what you do that really demonstrates what's going on in your heart. Glory to God, right? It's really about what we do. And so works are a demonstration of the true faith that we need. They reveal the inner workings of your yes. heart. They yes. reveal the inner workings of your mind. They reveal the transformation that God has worked in you yes. because you do things that you didn't do before. You forgive people. You never forgave people before. <laughs> right. And see, that that shows you you got some faith in it because you never, right? That's people right. do things to you and you turn in the other cheek. Maybe not literally, but you know what I mean? You're giving them another chance. Yes. You're being equally vulnerable to them a second, a third, and a fourth time. Time. Whereas before you protected yourself, you were ready to throw down before, yes, right? But yes. now, mm -hmm. right, and that shows no God got a hold of you, yes. right? Because by faith you became His child, and then He began working on you, and you have been transformed by the renewing of your mind, yes, yes, right. Yes. And so that that's what James is talking about here, and he says, so you want to claim you have faith? He says, you know. 
Show me your faith without good works. If you just want to say it's faith and works and you have faith and I have works, if, if you really want to do that, then just try to. He's, he's challenging. Mm -hmm. Try to show me your faith right. without showing me any works. Right. Mm -hmm. He says it doesn't, it, it, it can't. You, it, it has to go together. Now let's look at verse 19. He says, you believe that there is one God. Thou doest well. He said, that's a good thing. <laughs> Mm -hmm. That you believe that there's only one God. But watch this. He said the devils also <laughs> believe yes. and tremble. Mm -hmm. And see, here's the problem. It, how many times we saw that? There's a couple of times in the gospel, didn't we see where, where the demons were inside a person? And they said, why are you come to torment us before the time, thou yeah. son of God? Mm -hmm. See, they knew who Jesus was. Right. They knew better than a lot of the people. Yes, yes. They knew he was the son of God. Why you come to torment us before the time? Mm -hmm. They knew he was the son of God. And they said, demons know. Mm -hmm. And they tremble. Right. Even they do something. But one of the things they don't do, they don't obey him, though. Right. You know what I mean? So, see, that's the problem with just knowing. And that's the thing that I think James is really mm -hmm. trying to get at. That, see, when you have faith, I know God. See, sometimes we got to be careful between mentally assenting mm -hmm. and agreeing to the word and trying to equate that with faith. Yes. Just because you agree that you should forgive, if you don't forgive, then you don't have faith to forgive. <laughs> yes. You see what I mean? You, there's something missing because faith needs to be linked with a corresponding yeah. action. Nah. Right? There needs to be a corresponding action action. I like what the Amplified says about this. It says um, in, verse seven, in verse 17 the Amplified, it says faith, if it does not have works, deeds and actions of obedience to back it up mm -hmm. is without power. Deeds and actions of obedience wow. to back it up. Mm -hmm. And see, that's why it comes back to the word, right? Of obedience. It's yeah. of what God has said. So when we talk about having good works and actions, it's not just what I feel like doing. Right. Mm -hmm. It has to be an action that's based on the word. It's an action of obedience because God has already spoken it. He's either told me in my prayer closet or it's in the word. And I now act in obedience yes, to that. Yes. And now those are the works that demonstrate my faith. Yes. It demonstrates yes. I believe in this word. It demonstrates that I believe in what God is telling me. Because I'm doing what the word says yes. yeah. to do. Demons believe that Jesus is God. Mm -hmm. But they don't have faith. Because they don't have any acts of obedience to back it up. <laughs> you see what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we just can't go, well, I believe in God. Yeah, but do you have acts of obedience mm -hmm. to back it up? Because if you don't, then that's not real. You got to really look at it. Is that a saving faith? Mm -hmm. Because a saving faith changes you and makes you into someone who is a doer of the word. Mm -hmm. Right? And you do it by faith. So it says, you believe that there's one God, you do well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? He said, you really want to know? You, you, yeah. Okay, you, you, you want to, <laughs> do you want some proof <laughs> that faith without works is dead? And then he starts talking about Abraham. Mm -hmm. And he says about Abraham, was not Abraham our father justified by works? when he had offered Isaac upon the altar. And this is where people start to go, okay, James has lost it. But he, when he said he was justified by works, he's saying, wasn't he shown to be justified? In other yeah. words, again, it's a demonstration. Yes. Okay, let, let's do this. Okay, let's read this again, and then we're going to go to Romans chapter 4. Romans 4. But let's do this first. He says, was not Abraham our father justified by works when he offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works and by his works was faith made perfect? Mm -hmm. Right? And let's just see. It says in, in, in the Amplified, you see that his faith 
was cooperating with his works mm -hmm. and his faith was completed and reached its supreme expression when he implemented it by good works. So that's the whole part is that the, the good works that we do completes our faith. Yeah. Right. It shows Yep, that's a, yep, that's the true faith right there, because, you know, when you start to do things like give your last dime or, you know, you know, uh, humble yourself <laughs> before someone, you know, many a woman who's like, you know, you know they, what's the word? Submission. Right. That it was what, why submit to your husband. Yeah. You know, and there's some women. But then when. <laughs> <laughs> but, but then when right but when when you are really walking in yes, faith yes. you start to walk that out yes. right and you know yes. god you know to the man you know love your wife like christ loved the church and gave himself for her. <laughs> but then you start to right you yeah. right god really gets a hold of you because you want to obey him and so you don't just go i believe god i believe god and then act in ways that are contrary to his word because right. the holy right. ghost convicts you mm -hmm. and then you go i gotta get this right and lord help and then you start praying praying for help lord help me help me to <laughs> submit to this man help me to love this woman help me to honor my father <laughs> right yes. we start to do that oh, because see that's that faith that we really have wants to obey mm -hmm. so even if you're struggling you go god help me <laughs> you know what i mean oh, because yeah. you want to obey because your faith is leading you to acts of obedience yes jesus that back up your profession of faith mm -hmm. right and so he's saying here right that that uh that's what happened with abraham he he believed god when god told him so shall thy seed be Mm -hmm. He hadn't done anything yet. He looked up in the sky. And God said, count the stars. And he said, "He, be, you know, so shall thy seed be. And he believed God. And it was counted unto him for righteousness. Yes. He didn't do anything. But James is saying, yeah. But that faith that he had when he believed God was truly demonstrated. When yes. God said to him, sacrifice your son, your only son, Isaac, whom you love. Yes. And he was willing to do that. That demonstrated. Yes. That man has some faith. Yes. <laughs> Amen. So let's go, let's go to Romans chapter four for a second, because this is where we see Paul talking about Abraham. In verse number one, he says, what shall we say then that Abraham, our father, as pertaining to the flesh, has found. For if Abraham were justified by works, but wait a minute, didn't James just say he was justified by works? Yeah, he did, but he said, if Abraham was justified by works, he had way of the glory, but not before God. But what saith the scripture? Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward not reckoned of grace, but of debt. But to him that worketh not, but believeth on him that justifies the ungodly, his faith is counted as righteousness. Mm. I guess one way to look at this is this. Paul is coming against the idea that you can work for your salvation. So he's, yes. he's speaking on the front end. Yes. If you want to be saved, on the front end, yes. if you want to be saved, you have mm -hmm. to have faith. Don't come here with your so-called good works of the <laughs> yeah. flesh and all the rest of that. You have to believe that Jesus is the Son of God, yes. that Jesus is the Savior of the world. You have to believe that Jesus Christ is the Messiah, that he is the Lamb of God, the only begotten of the Father, that he's yes. the propitiation for yes. our sins, that he's our Redeemer. You have to believe that. So on the front end, if you want to be saved, that's what you have to bring to the table, a yes. belief Jesus. in Jesus as the Son of God. That's what Paul is saying. He's speaking on the front end. Mm -hmm. James is speaking on the back end. He's now saying, so now since you're saying that you're saved on the front end, mm -hmm. there needs to be something on the back end. To prove it. Right. So they're not talking contradictory things. Right. They're just talking at it from different ends. Yes. Right. So on the front end, you have to have faith in order to be saved. Paul is saying, yes. don't bring your good works over here. Yes. Right. And James is saying over here, if you really are saved, then don't just don't bring your mouth. 
Yes. In your professions of faith, show me the works yes. that provide evidence of that faith. So that's what they're doing. They're just talking at different ends of the faith spectrum, mm -hmm. right? And so what he's saying about Abraham is Abraham believed God on the front end when God said, count the stars. He believed him. It was counted him for righteousness. He was saved. Mm -hmm. But the demonstration came on the back end. Mm -hmm. When he, God told him, put your son on the altar. And that's he did right. it. Wow. Right? So that's the point of James. He's saying, if, if we're going to make the profession of faith, mm -hmm. we need to understand that the evidence of the true faith that we have, if we do have it, mm -hmm. is going to be shown through works. Yes. It's going to be th shown through acts of obedience. Amen. <laughs> Amen. 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 Mm -hmm. Amen. Um, so he says, and the scripture was fulfilled, verse 23, which says, Abraham believed God and it was imputed to him for righteousness and he was called a friend of God. You see then how by works a man is justified by and not by faith only. And again, what he's saying here is that completion of the picture is shown yes. with works. Mm -hmm. And, he, and then he goes, likewise, was not Rahab the harlot justified by works? And you remember, Rahab was the harlot in Jericho yeah. who hid the spies. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when, it, when the soldiers of Jericho came looking for them, they said, she said, oh, they went, they went, they went that way right. when they were really hiding under the straw. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and it says that she was justified by works because she did something. Right? right? Because remember, she says, oh, no, we believe you. your God is the true living God. Everybody here in this in this town is scared. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? And she acted accordingly. And so it says in verse 26, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. So in the end, we come back to this, that faith saves us right we are we are, by grace we are saved through faith but we also see that once we're saved by that faith we then begin living a life of good works yes for yes. which we were created in christ jesus Amen. to carry out mm -hmm. so god didn't save us so that we could Put our hands on our head, put our feet up, and just wait to go to heaven. Right. There's work to do in the earth. Amen. But, right? And that's that that's what this is is about. And so it's really about that our works demonstrated. John Calvin, a French theologian, he said, Faith alone saves, but a faith that saves is never alone. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. And that's such a powerful faith. Faith alone saves. Right. But a faith that saves is never alone. Why? Because it's mm -hmm. accompanied by good works. Right. Right? It's accompanied by good works. So that's something to keep in mind. Faith alone saves, but a faith that saves is never alone. It's going to be in the company of your good works. It's going to be in the company of your obedience. It's going to be in the company of your good deeds. Amen. Right? Mm -hmm. Now, um... You know, we, we, we were talking about last week when we were talking about being doers of the word, how Mary said to the servants at the wedding feast, whatever he He's tells saying, you yes. to do, mm -hmm. do, do it. it. Mm -hmm. See, because that's the thing. There needs to be a doing. Um, let's do this. We're, we're, near, we're, we're in James. So let's go to the book of Hebrews. That's only a couple of pages back. And let's look at Hebrews chapter 11. Because Hebrews chapter 11 is faith, right? Right. Now watch this. We just, we'll read just a couple, but we'll, we'll get the idea. Let's look at verse 4. <clears throat> By faith, Abel offered unto God. Verse 5. By faith, Enoch was translated. Verse 7. By faith, Noah prepared an ark. Mm. By faith, Abraham obeyed and he went out, not knowing where he went. Mm -hmm. Verse 9, by faith, he sojourned, mm -hmm. right? 
Um, verse 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed. Mm -hmm. um, verse 17. By faith Abraham offered up Isaac. Yes. Verse 23. By faith Noah... Uh, what does it say? That he, oh, and I said Noah, I mean Moses. 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 Mm -hmm. He was hid three months. Uh, and then it says when he was come of years, he refused to be called the son of God. And what did he do instead? He chose to suffer. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right? By faith, it says he forsook Egypt. Why are we saying that? Because it shows that by faith, People did something. Yes. <laughs> There's always a doing behind the faith. Mm -hmm. You don't just go by faith, I'm saved. That's not the, right? There's a doing. There's a going out. There's a, a sojourning. There's a giving. There's a sacrificing. There's, there's a loving. There's a forgiving. Yes. There's yes. a helping. There's something that is done that corresponds to your profession of I believe in Jesus. Yes. Who is the author and finisher of my faith. I believe in him. And because if you believe in him, then you're going to do things. You're going to fill jars with water. Yes. You're going to be like, you, you know, in John chapter 9, there was a man who was born blind. Mm -hmm. And the disciples said, who did sin that this man was born blind? The man or his parents? And Jesus said, none. This is about so that the works of God can be demonstrated, right? And then he like put clay or something on the man's eyes, right? Mm -hmm. And then he told him something. Go wash in the pool of Siloam. Yeah. Now, if that man doesn't believe, mm -hmm. right? If he doesn't have faith that Jesus is a healer, right? that man goes, ain't going nowhere. <laughs> and he just starts wiping the mud off his face. Mm -hmm. But what happened? He went and he did, did something. something. See, faith showed... See, there's there's something that comes on the, on the other side of that profession yeah. of faith, mm -hmm. right? You think about the widow of Zarephath. You know, there was an act of faith when, when Elijah said, that, I'm just, I'm just going to make... I got a little oil, a little meal. I'm going to make it something for me and my son. We're going to eat it. We're going to die. He go, okay, yeah, but make me one first. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You want to tell me that wasn't faith in action? See, there's a corresponding. She can't just go, I believe this is a man of God. Yeah. See, if you believe that's a man of God, then there's got to be some action, action. that comes behind that. Same thing with the widow with who said, my my, my um, um sons are going to be taken mm -hmm. into... They're going to be taken because of the debt. Right. And uh, Elisha said, go borrow pots. Not a few. Right. Right. right? Borrow right. not a few. She had to do something. Yeah. You believe God's going to get you out of debt? You just, you can't sit on the couch. Right. You just can't sit on the couch praying. She prayed when she went to the man of God and, and asked for help. Right. Mm -hmm. Do you know in the law, when you file a lawsuit, um, when you file a lawsuit in the law, uh, when you ask for your remedy, mm -hmm. it's called the prayer of relief. <laughs> That's what it's called. Mm -hmm. It's called your prayer of relief. Mm -hmm. It's what you're asking for. So, so when we come down to it, a lot of the, the real aspect of prayer, as we know, is asking. Yeah. So when she went to. Mm -hmm. Elisha and said I'm in debt and the debtors are going to come and take my son and she's she was asking for help she was yeah. praying yes right she was praying because she was asking for relief mm -hmm. and so how many of us when we go to God we pray we're asking for relief Lord I need some money you ask for yes. relief Lord take this pain out of my body you're asking for relief right mm -hmm. she asked for relief and then the man of God told her what? To do something. Mm -hmm. Because what is, what is it about? Okay, you are asking for relief, presumably because you have faith that God can do something for you. Yes. But then God turns around and says, 
If you have faith, let me see what you are going to do. <laughs> because faith without works is dead. There needs to be that corresponding action, right? That you do something that lines up with your profession of faith. And I think that's why so many people now um, have trouble because God will tell you to do yeah. something. He will tell you, mm -hmm. go wash in the pool of Siloam. Yep. He will tell you, go borrow pots and borrow not yeah. a few. Yeah. He will tell you, make me a cake first. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See, a lot of people don't understand. When, when, <laughs> when you have some money, you finally got some money, and then God says, I want you to put extra money into the into the offering mm -hmm. or I want you to give some money to uh, uh, to this person or to that person. I want you to, right? You know what he's saying? Make me a cake first. Yeah, that's what he's saying. Yeah. And a lot of us don't understand. We think that that was only said to the widow of Zarephath. No, God has said to you plenty of times, make me a cake, cake first. first. And how many times did we not make God a cake first? Wow. Wow. He's looking for us to do something. Mm -hmm. So so that's the thing that we, we, we have to understand and really get in our spirit. That it's about being a doer of the word. And if we're doing, if we truly are doers of the word, then we're living by faith. And in that doing, we are going to have some corresponding action, some actions and some deeds of obedience that yes. back up our profession of being born again believers in Jesus Christ. Yeah. Right? We're going to have that. Now, let, let's turn to uh, Matthew chapter 21. I like this story. It's the, it's the parable, and you'll know it as I, as I say this to you. It's the parable of the two sons. You remember the parable of the two sons where mm -hmm. uh, in verse 28 of Matthew chapter 21, Jesus says that a certain man had two sons, and he came to the first and said, Son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. <laughs> right. Right? Mm -hmm. But afterward, he repented and went. Mm -hmm. And he came to the second and said, Likewise, meaning he said to him, Go work in my vineyard. And the second son said, I go, sir. <laughs> and he went not. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, whether, whether of them twain, which one of them did the will of his father? And those who were present told him the first one did. Yes. And Jesus said, that's right. right. I read this. And now, this story is really about who, as Jesus said here, as we go on, just to complete the parable. He says, he says, I tell you that the publicans and harlots go into the kingdom before you, because he was talking to the mm -hmm. Pharisees, mm -hmm. <clears throat> because the Pharisees and those of religious order were like the second son, mm -hmm. who, who act like they obey God, but they don't do what God tells them to do. Right. So know what that is? That's a faith that has no works that yes. corresponds Amen. to it. Mm -hmm. But the first one, the first son said, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. But then went. <clears throat> now, someone would say, well, okay, but he went. But where was his faith? Right. Okay, but let's go back to the scripture. It says, he said to the son, go work today in my vineyard. And he answered and said, I will not. Now, here's the key part. But afterward, he did what? He went. No. Huh? He repented. Oh, he repented. That's the key part. He repented first, which means he had a change of heart. Mm -hmm. That's where his faith came in. See, at first he just said, he was disobedient. Right. He yeah. just said, I ain't going. Mm -hmm. But then he repented. And see, that's how, that's how we are, right? When we're living for ourselves, we're disobedient. But then when God gets a hold of us, we repent. Yeah. And that repenting yeah. leads to us saying, I believe in you, Lord. Yeah. And so now that you believe, if you really believe, what happens? You have some action. Yeah. And now like the, like the sun, you go. You go. Mm -hmm. And you actually go and you do something. Amen. Amen. And so that's the, that's the part, you know, and that's why when James is saying that faith without works is dead. 
And he, he even says, he says, just as, what did he say? I, I don't want to mess this up. But he says, um, as he concludes this in um, James 2 and 26, he says, for as the body without the spirit is dead, mm -hmm. so faith without works is dead also. Awesome. See, the spirit is that energizing force. It's that powerful yeah. force, right? Where the spirit mm -hmm. of the Lord is, is liberty. I mean, we need that spirit. God breathed into yeah. man and he became a living soul right you know you need that yeah otherwise you're dead your body is dead and what he's saying is in the same manner if you have faith but there's no works in it that faith is dead yeah it's lifeless mm -hmm. because it's not what it's not doing anything, anything. right right it's not doing anything it has no life to it um and so it comes then for us where we have to then ask ourselves some questions. And, you know, and that is, how are we doing on this mm -hmm. score, right? For those of us who, who profess Jesus Christ as our Savior, and, and we profess to be saved, and we're in the family of God. And again, this is not to, cha this is not to challenge or, you know what I mean, suspect anybody's, that's not up to me. Mm -hmm. God's the judge, right? It's not up to you. It's, and it's not right. any of us. God's right. the judge. Mm -hmm. But we do need to look at ourselves and say, how am I doing on this score? Right. I really, I do believe in God. Then you, then the next question, but what am I doing? Right. What, 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 right, to show it. What, what actions mm -hmm. do I have to show and that would demonstrate the faith that I profess to have, yes. right? Mm -hmm. What am I doing? Am I living my life in a way through acts of obedience to back up my profession, right? Right? Am I, how do I live with my spouse? How do I live with my neighbor? How do I go about my job? Yes. God yeah. tells employees how to go about your job. Yep. Don't just give eye service, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Do as it unto the Lord carry out your job you know he talks to employers about how to treat your employees god you know so there's 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 a lot of word that's supposed to govern our interactions yeah. with one another mm -hmm. right and and then on top of the word that's here that governs our interactions god is always speaking as we said from the beginning he's a speaking communicating god he's yeah. not an idol he's always speaking and even in the midst of his general word he starts giving us some specifics, yeah. <laughs> right? right. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. right, and so, if we're really living by faith, then between the general word and the specifics, there's going to be a lot of demonstration of actions yeah. to show mm -hmm. that we believe God, yeah. where no one has to even question. Not that it's their place, but you know what I mean. You could know. Mm -hmm. As James was saying, I'll show you my faith yeah. by my works. Mm -hmm. So we have to ask ourselves, are we, do, you know, how are we doing there? We have to ask God, how are we doing there? You know, because mm -hmm. are we performing the good works that God has ordained that we should walk in? That's what Paul said in Ephesians 2 and 10, right? right? Mm -hmm. He has ordained mm -hmm. that we should walk in them, that we should come forth with with good works. Um, are we doing that? Yeah. Are we consistent with it? Because again, this commandment that's given unto us, the just shall live by faith, means there should be some evidence of the faith that we say we have. Yes. You know? Yes. So, you know, we want to be able to do that. We want to be able to demonstrate to the world. You know, and you say, why do I got to show anybody anything? Well, Jesus even said that if we have love one to another, we'll show the world that we are his disciples. Right. He said, by this, they will know that you are my disciples indeed, when you have love one to another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And love, right? Faith works by love. Right? Love is, if you love me, what? Keep my, my commandments. Man. Right? Those are the mm -hmm. acts of obedience. So, you know, how are, we, how are we doing there? And so, you know, the one thing I will say as we close is, you know, life gets hard sometimes when, you know, we can get tired and frustrated at 
doing things for everybody else, <laughs> or, yeah. or, or just like you know, <laughs> you know, it's like God's always like telling you, make me a cake first, mm -hmm. or you know, He's telling you to look out for this one and look out for that one and look out, and we could be a little bit like Peter, you know, what about this man, Lord, yeah. and, and all the rest of that, you know. And I can get, it can really be a temptation to want to pull back and to draw back, right, from those acts of obedience where you want to go, I'm not doing anything anymore. Yeah. I'm tired. Mm -hmm. I'm not doing it. I mean, you know, if you've walked with God, man, you'll get there because God is tireless. Yeah. <laughs> it's always it's like it's a, something else and it's something mm -hmm. else, right? It, you know, and so you can get to the point where you, you know, you just want to throw up your hands sometimes. But, you know, even when things get rough and, and, and you're frustrated and, and, and you have that temptation to pull back, you don't want to pull back from doing because that for you mm -hmm. will let you know you're still standing in faith. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You know, and, and, and you know, you. What, what what does the scripture say? It says, in our weakness, right, his strength is made perfect. And yes. so when we are tired, it doesn't mean we pull back. It means now we have to tap into that perfected strength. Yes. You know, yes. but we got to keep doing. You know what I mean? Because we're his hands, his eyes, his feet yep. in the earth, right? And God wants to, uh, you know, do good to those who are in need and those, um, you know, uh, who are struggling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And he needs us to be the doers of the work. Amen. So we want to make sure that as, as faith people who are living by faith, that we are doers of the word. And that means that we're going to have some good works that show, yep, <laughs> them folks are saved. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. So just want to encourage you to continue to live out your faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Live out your faith and and, and, and show show the world. Uh, show yourself. Amen. Mm -hmm. And know that God is looking down with, with a smile on his face. Right? Well mm -hmm. done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you don't say well done to someone who's not doing anything. Right. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Done is the completion of an action. Right? When you mm -hmm. go, I'm done, that means you completed an action. Right? So God says, well done, after the action. <laughs> Some people want God to go, well done, and you're not doing anything. Mm -hmm. He can't say, well done, if you're not doing anything. <laughs> so if you want God to say, well done, my good and faithful servant, get to doing. Amen. Amen. Be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. Amen. And let your faith be made evident. Through your good works. Amen. 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 Glory to God. Let's pray tonight. Father, we bless your name. Yes, Father. And we thank, thank you, God, Jesus. for your word, oh God. And yes. Father God, we yes, um, God. just pray that you will continue to speak unto us and give us even more revelation uh, concerning what we have heard from you tonight. Yes, Father. But Father, we thank you for the deposits that have been made. We thank you even for the word of correction and conviction that has come unto us, God, that we may... Uh, if we were not quite in the place where we should be, that, God, we can make that change and, and find ourselves in the center of yes, your will, Father, that we're you, doing God. what you would have us to do, what you are calling us to do, yes. what you have ordained and anointed us to do through Christ Jesus. And, Father, we bless you uh, for you and for your word. Now, God, we just pray uh, your blessings upon everyone, oh God, who is under the sound of our voices here tonight. And Father, we just pray that you'll be with them tonight and strengthen them. That, Father, you will answer their prayer, that you will be their strength, that yes, you will Lord. show them, oh God, yes, your goodness Lord. and Thank your glory. You, and Father God, that you will be glorified and magnified through it all. Father, we bless you tonight and we just thank you, O oh God, for another opportunity to share your word and to receive yes, your word. Father. And Father God, we're counting on you for the increase. We give you the praise in advance for it and we bless your holy name. Yes. In Jesus', in Jesus name. name. Amen. 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 Well, God bless you. We look forward to seeing you at the appointed time. Um, and hopefully we will see you on this coming Sunday. Until then, be blessed. God bless you.